Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about end of the road for John Eastman's efforts to shield memos that he and emails that he wrote uh, from public view. All right, so we actually have already seen these memos and that and emails, and that figures uh, in. Uh, all right, the January sixth committee gave him a subpoena for a bunch of stuff. And he shielded 10 of the most sensitive documents asserting this is attorney client privilege material with the client being Donald Trump. As with all the assertions of attorney client privilege, the existence of an attorney client relationship and all the other kind of basic procedural um, prerequisites for shielding were really dubious, and it's not at all clear he was acting as Trump's uh, lawyer, et cetera, et cetera. Nevertheless, he um, wanted to shield, and what the, in, a, in an important decision, it's now over a year ago, I think, Judge Carter in California ruled that they can't be shielded. They're not subject to attorney-client privilege. Why? because they are subject to the crime fraud exception. And what's that mean? That more likely than not, so not beyond a reasonable doubt, but more likely than not, these very emails and memos are evidence of a crime. And the crime, since they uh, run to Trump, among others, would almost certainly um, implicate others, including the former president, and they would uh, be um, strong evidence of a conspiracy to obstruct justice, commit election fraud, and the like. All right, so he goes to Carter and says, "Don't I don't want to give these over to the January 6th committee." And and Judge Carter, in very hard hitting language, it was you know huge headlines at the time, said they are subject to the crime fraud exception because more likely than not they're evidence of a crime. And that, you know, whipped around the sort of um, uh, cable uh, news networks as well as, uh, you know, everywhere else on social media because it was the first sort of uh, finding, as it were, even though by more likely than not that Trump uh, was involved in a crime. All right. Um, thereafter... Eastman appeals. Uh, they are they are emails, by the way, that he offered, but that his um, university where he was uh, working that's he's since been fired, or at least I think he's been fired, Chapman University. Um, they were on their servers, and the subpoena um, went actually to them. But Eastman, because they, he wrote them, had standing to challenge. He, after Judge Carter made that ruling. Uh, appealed to the Ninth Circuit. But in the meantime, the memos had been made public. As a result, the Ninth Circuit held that the uh, argument about attorney-client privilege and their being shielded from view was moot. So they wouldn't reverse it. On the other hand, they didn't void the ruling. That's a discretionary thing that a court of appeals can do if a case has become moot, but they don't have to, and here they didn't. So the ruling still stayed. And Eastman took his final shot to the U.S. Supreme Court saying, the district court has found these were subject to the crime fraud exception. The Ninth Circuit said the dispute was was moot. Supreme Court, can you please void the district court ruling because of the stigma on me as having been found more likely than not to have engaged in criminal conduct? And end of the road came today, uh, Monday, the first Monday in October, when the Supreme Court actually officially closed out its books from the last term and opened uh, the, the the term ahead, so-called October term 2023. And one of the orders it issued denied Eastman's petition for certiorari, meaning they did not uh, revisit that ruling and it now stands. So um, not only have the documents uh, been released to public and of course to prosecutors, and I believe one among them is one that figures uh, in the um, the January 6th indictment. 
uh, not only have they been released, but also Eastman, the, the um, determination by a district court judge that Eastman more likely than not engaged in um, fraud uh, stands as well. And uh, that's one of the acts, by the way, that are at issue in his efforts that don't look too uh, promising right now to save his California law license, which he uh, is in the middle of trying to do, has actually testified about a few weeks back, but we haven't had a final determination from the California bar authorities. All right. So crime fraud exception, uh, uh, Eastman in particular, but also implicates Trump. Now that finding has been upheld. Uh, the, the barn door is open anyway, and the documents are in the public eye. And there's, there's some of the strongest having to do with efforts by Eastman to say, Oh, you can delay things. Oh, you can get Pence to actually send things back to the states rather than just announce the vote. All kinds of things that are front and center of his potential now criminal um, jeopardy uh, in Fulton County, among other places. So end of the road for him on that ruling, the stigma such as it is, and with everything he's been that's running his way, it's the, the stigma from the crime fraud exception, I think is a, is a relatively minor part. But anyway, that now stays nowhere to go after the Supreme Court denies uh, cert and uh, the documents are out and the determination of, of crime fraud exception to attorney client is now um, established law. So there you have it. Another bad day for Eastman and certainly more to come. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.